Hello and welcome to Nature Sunshine's Education Week 2018. Knowledge at your fingertips. What a wonderful day it is and what a wonderful opportunity each of you have taken to be with us today on another fabulous Education Week seminar. We're so, so excited that you've joined us today on our presentation. I'm very excited to introduce to you our topic for today. I am Brian Wall and I'll be your webinar host for today's presentation. So, so excited to continue our education. What a great company Nature Sunshine is that invests in your knowledge and thank you for taking the time to do just that as well. Today's presentation, Enzymes for a Healthy Microbiome, Microbial Biofilm by Dr. J. Vanden Heuvel, PhD, IMD, DHS. What a wonderful, great opportunity we have once again to hear from our favorite Dr. J. Dr. J, I'm going to turn the time over to you and let, let you take us away right into our presentation so we can get into it today. Thank you, Jay, for taking the moment to be with us and spending the time to prepare this presentation. So thankful for you, Jay. Thank you, Brian. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Education Week. Uh, hopefully, you've already uh, heard some webinars by some great uh, speakers like Dr. Lehman. But today, we're going to be getting into... Uh, enzymes for a healthy microbiome and, and something called microbial biofilms. Uh, we have a lot to discuss, uh, so hang in there. You might want to take some notes, but what I encourage you to do is to come back and, and listen to this recording again. Uh, I, I caught the webinar on Monday, and I'm actually uh, uh, proud to say I had to listen to it twice because there was so much good information. Uh, I'm Dr. Jay Van Hamble, and I have a doctorate and PhD in integrative medicine and a doctorate in humanitarian services. I am a doctor of integrative medicine, um, board certified holistic health practitioner and reflexologist and uh, lots more other stuff. In other words, I've been doing this for a long time and, and some of you know me and some of you do not. Uh, it's just to let you know that I read a lot. And so as we talk about enzymes today and how they relate to the microbiome, this is a very fascinating and brand new powerful uh, future of medicine. But we have to start out with some basic concepts and then we'll talk about what these enzymes are and how they affect these different systems and how you can use enzymatic therapies in with the programs that you're using in all of your businesses which can actually increase the effectiveness of what's happening. So we're kind of going to be getting very in-depth on a lot of different types of subjects. Most people recognize enzymes as a digestive supplement only. But we are now in the know on everything from sports nutrition to even pet health and everything in between. So I'm going to get a little scientific and down and dirty at times, and then, but keep it so that you can understand it and apply it to your everyday needs. So we will be talking about digestion, but we'll also uh, touch on a lot of different things, including something what I call systemic enzymes and how important this can be uh, when you're trying to find optimum health. So these concepts that you see in front of you, right, eat food as if it is medicine. Otherwise, you may have to eat medicine as your food. Right? That's kind of what's been happening in our day-to-day -day activities and what is happening to our culture and our society and our food development. And you may have heard of some of those sayings such as, uh, you are what you eat. I'm sure you've heard that one. Well, along the way, you know, in, in my 30 years of studying uh, all this natural health and nutrition, I found out that it isn't just what you eat, it's what you absorb, which is really where the enzyme component comes in powerfully. And so teach this to people as you're educating about nutrition and supplementation, that yeah, it's important what you're eating, but it's also very important that you digest that food and absorb that food. And then today, we're gonna tie that into, we are what our microbes eat. And that's a fascinating whole new idea of what's happening with nutrition therapy, is that yeah, it's important what we eat, but we have to have the right enzymes and uh, food brought to us in, in a fresh and raw kind of uh, state. And then it's our microbes that really break all that food down along with the help of enzymes. So you can see already that we're partnering enzymes and bacteria together in understanding what's called postbiotics. And that's a word that you'll hear again and again, and it's going to get a lot of popularity. It's something called postbiotics. It means what happens after the bacteria have 
broken down your food into nutrients. They start making molecules that are good for us in our immune system, in our skin, our hair, our respiration, our cardiovascular, our hormones. They affect every single part of you. So the more we know how to help digestive and systemic with enzymes and the microbiome, the more powerful we are at helping people with all the difficulties, difficulties that they have with the standard American diet. You may have seen this before. I use it quite a bit. I even have it on a bumper sticker on my car. The road to good health is paved with good intestines. You know, I've studied uh, nutrition, natural health, holism, quantum physics, uh, anatomy, physiology, biology, chemistry. I've studied a lot of different things. And it always comes back to the gut. And even Hippocrates uh, said that thousands of years ago. What is happening here in the standard American diet or SAD diet is about 90% of people in our country describe their diet as healthy. And, and that's amazing, right? You probably are all nodding your head yes as you, as you hear that because people come in and you say, hey, tell me what you eat. And they go, oh, I eat healthy. Everybody thinks they do. Yet close to two-thirds of Americans are over, overweight and obese. Um, yeah, we have to understand food better. And then we have to also understand how our body converts that food to energy in order to truly tackle these metabolic problems like cardiometabolic syndrome. And when we think about this, what we have to do is just apply common sense and logic. How much of your food is denatured? How much of it is cooked? How much of it is processed, canned, boxed, refined, styrofoam, plastic, microwave? You get the idea. It's not like what we were doing hundreds and thousands of years ago when we were eating right off the land, sometimes eating dirt and bugs, right? And ew, we all think. But yet, that's kind of how we uh, uh, came along with the understanding of food. So if you think about that, you start understanding, hmm, there might be a problem with we are what we absorb and we are what our microbes eat. We're going to talk a little bit about anatomy. I'll cover this kind of quick. It's not to bore you. It's just to set the stage. But where does the microbiome, all these little bacteria that are so important to our health, you know, where do they start? Well, they, they start on your skin, but actually with the process of digestion and what happens systemically is it starts in the mouth. This is where we also start to talk about a concept called biofilm, which is biology, a film from biology. An example of that would be dental plaque, right? When, when our teeth get this dental plaque on it and it stays on there, it tartars the teeth. It allows the bacteria uh, to, to get at the enamel and the dentin of the teeth. And so that's an example of what we call a biofilm. And sometimes you have to go to the dentist, you know, once or twice a year and, and have a good cleaning, right? You got to get that tartar out of there, which is actually an example of a biofilm. Well, that biofilm can exist in other areas of your body as well, throughout you, even systemically. And it's something that we're going to try to understand and tackle. Uh, with enzymatic supplementation. Now our enzymes, you know, they're, they're a part of life. I'll get into what they are in a minute, but they mix with our saliva and it contains an enzyme called pitalin. And this is actually an amylase. And anytime you see these big words that have A-S-E on the end of them, like amylase, A-S-E always means it's an enzyme. So whenever you see a word with A-S-E at the end of it, you know that means enzyme. This pitalin dissolves our food immediately, and the saliva produces lubrication so we can swallow it, and we produce about a quart and a half of saliva every day. Then it gets into the stomach, as you can see from this picture, and there our food is mixed with something called hydrochloric acid, which is great for fighting off bad bacteria and little critters and also breaking down proteins. And then um, as this is all mixed, and there's a little bit of what's called pepsin, another enzyme. Uh, we get into something called chyme. And so what's coming out of the stomach and entering our small intestines is known as chyme. All of this ensures a quick breakdown of food. So that chyme is then passed along into the small intestine. And here we have the liver, the gallbladder, the pancreas are all donating or secreting additional enzymes. And these enzymes are nothing more than catalyst. Catalyst is a word that says, I make things happen fast. And also bile salts, which break down our fat components. And this is all necessary so that whatever we're eating, we can get out the appropriate proteins and break those into little building blocks, carbohydrates, so we have energy and fats, 
which are so necessary for so many different things in our brain and our heart health and our blood quality. Pancreas produces something called amylase for carbohydrates. The liver produces a bile called uh, a bile for fats, and the gallbladder stores that bile. Three parts of the intestines, they absorb starches, proteins, and fats. So really, you are what you absorb is happening here. It isn't in the stomach. It's once it's past all of what I just mentioned. And that chyme gets broken down into smaller and smaller chunks, or what we call nutrients. Smaller the better. Enzymes make all that happen. If there was no such thing as enzymes, we'd all be dead. Okay, so enzymes are necessary, necessary for life. And we'll see that in a minute. So some interesting system facts. There are actually more organs in your entire digestive system than any other system. It's basically two-thirds of you. Two-thirds of everything that you could touch and feel and see <laughs> has one job, to break food into energy. Uh, what we eat, what we absorb, and what our microbes uh, break into postbiotics. So up to two-thirds of our enzyme supply what we are born with, what we create, what we recycle, is just to digest food. And then some of that is used even to clean house. So enzymes become critical not just for digestion, but also cleansing and detoxification. So imagine if you don't have enough. The average American consumes about 40 tons of food in a lifetime. It's going to take some enzymes to break all that down. But the question becomes, and this is what we need to ask and also answer and then teach this on to our clients is how much food is denatured and void of enzymes. Well, if you think about it quite a bit, because remember back in the beginning, everybody thinks 90% of Americans think to eat healthy. But how much of that food is in a raw form or lightly steamed or lightly broiled? Or is it baked, fried, microwaved, cooked? Well, enzymes are very fragile. So when we're processing food, cooking food, denaturing food, we destroy the enzymes. So I want to stop here for a second because I often get into this debate with the medical community because I do teach this uh, to medical people. Uh, they often say, well, I was told when I studied medicine that you are born with plenty of enzymes. You've got enough for a lifetime. That may have been true 100 years ago. That's not true today. Because 100 years ago, most of the food that we ate, we were growing on farms, we were gathering, we were canning, we were preserving as fresh or eating fresh or raw. Like if you've ever been to China, you will notice that everybody uh, starts their day by shopping and then preparing and cooking the food for that day, not about preserving it or, or making enough to last a week. They eat by the day. That's a completely different concept than what most Americans do. Most Americans go shopping once or twice a month and they buy all this food with shelf life. But that, uh, again, has denatured the food. So that question is there to get you to think about, well, yeah, it makes sense. You know, if we're getting all these foods that uh, are not raw and fresh and, uh, you know, even like wintertime, like now, uh, there's not a lot of fresh uh vegetables and fruits they have to come from other countries and a lot of times they're not ripened where they have their own naturally occurring enzymes well what does that mean it means you may think anatomically that you have all these enzymes to do all this job but that was also part of the thought process of what the food supply gave us so in other words if 75 percent of your enzyme requirement is in your body and 25 percent is supposed to be in your food and all your food is devoid of those well, what are you doing? You're causing the body to bind up all its enzymes, trying to process denatured and cooked food. That should be an eye-opener to you right then and there of why we want to bring in more raw, uh, raw, fresh, and natural. Or more importantly, why you want to supplement with enzymes. It's because we got to up the ante, right? So what are enzymes? I'm going to spend a little time here, so bear with me. They're biological catalysts for life. They accelerate things, several thousand. They combine with other, what's called coenzymes. You may have heard of uh, CoQ10. That's a coenzyme, which can form up to 100,000 different chemicals. So you kind of need these for the body to break all this down. And nutrition cannot be explained without understanding these enzymes and how they make everything happen. 
if you heard uh, other webinars like on protein synthesis and, and muscle recovery, uh, it's enzymes that make that happen. It's how the body can break proteins down into branch chain amino acids and, and muscle synthesis. So if we don't have uh, the enzymes, none of this can happen. Almost all metabolic processes in cells need enzymes in order to occur at a rate fast enough to sustain life. Things have to happen very quick, and that's what enzymes are doing. They're making everything happen fast and quick. And we could kind of break that out a little bit. Cellular enzymes. We don't have a lot of... Uh, um, you know, connection here from supplementation because many are produced in very, very tiny quantities that work inside the cell. And it's very rare that you'd run out of enzymes here at the cellular level. It can happen, but it's very, very rare. It's very hard to even point to a, an illness like that. But uh, there are genetic problems that show up here. The ones we're concerned with is more digestive and systemic. If we look at digestive enzymes, they're produced in large quantities. They act outside the cell, uh, in, inside the digestive tract, and they're speeding up digestion. They're breaking down all the nutrients, and they're also very complementary to probiotic supplements. Now, probiotics and enzymes are not the same thing, right? They're, although they're very different. Um, the one-two punch is huge. Anything we can do to help break down that food quicker, faster is easier for our good guys, our probiotics, uh, to make healthy molecules. So results from enzyme additions happen very fast. And, and uh, usually when you introduce digestive enzymes to people with digestive issues, they get relief very quickly. So I use a lot of enzymes in my practice. Um, because so many people have digestive issues and so many problems that we have every day are linked back to the digestive tract, right? You want to affect two-thirds of the problem, tackle digestion. Remember, two-thirds of all your organs. So anytime a customer can notice quick results, right, they're in your corner. They're spreading word of mouth. They're boosting your business. Other people are coming to you and saying, yeah, my friend had this digestive issue and you gave him a bunch of enzymes and now he's feeling better. So it's important to understand the power of digestive enzymes. Even in sports nutrition, which is a big uh, exploding market right now, enzymes help with what's called protein hyd hydrolysis. And, and that's just important if you're into muscle recovery, muscle building, absorption. Um, a lot of these athletes, even weekend warriors like most of us, right, uh, we start getting into these protein supplements, and we may be doing too much, uh, too fast, and sometimes we get digestive discomfort. And it's not that we're always having a problem with, like, a pea protein or a soy or a hemp, uh, for example. But it's because all of a sudden we're bringing this more in than we were before, and the body may have tied up enzymes doing other things, as I already outlined. Just FYI. Sometimes I'll even add a, a daily zinc to an enzyme to someone using a lot of protein. Uh, zinc kind of enhances enzymatic activity. So enzymes in zinc can kind of basically double your ability to create something called branch chain amino acids or BCAA, which is all the rage in sports nutrition. So if you're one of those people that's interested in sports nutrition, uh, this is information you need to share with them. It also doubles your ability to create glutamine, which is another uh, very powerful amino acid. So enzymes cross into everything. Um, they can even help decrease food allergens and sensitivity. A lot of people have gluten sensitivity, lactose intolerance, right? Or they're worried about hidden gluten in their foods. Uh, something called gliadin, which is part of gluten, is, is what destroys the immune system. Uh, you know, so it's good insurance. So I'll tell people that uh, have these gluten sensitivities. I'll say, you know, you need to be doing a daily enzyme along with everything else you're doing to make sure that if anybody accidentally put gluten in your food or it's hidden, you're not going to have a lot of digestive upset. And digestive enzymes also commit to pet health, right? In pets, that's the number one health concern. You look at veterinary studies, the number one problem is digestion. So many dog foods, cat foods, they're heavily processed. They're devoid of enzymes. Uh, it's cooked, you know, they're eating cooked food. Well, if a dog or a cat was in the wild, they'd be eating raw, right? But we have them in a home where they're eating table scraps or they may eat uh, some food that's been cooked and baked out of a bag, and they need help too, right? So enzymes can be great for helping a pet transition 
uh, with food choices. Now, systemic enzymes used for decades to help keep all systems active and they also have anti-aging and antioxidant effects. And that's where I want to focus a little bit of our story, is that's kind of the base of what we're talking about. We want to concentrate on that because systemic enzymes really concentrate on the cardiovascular system, joint health, can be anti-inflammatory. These are going to be the things we call protease, uh, natokinase, bromelain, papain. Uh, they have a lot of clinical promise in breaking down something called fibrin. So the more that you know about this, uh, the more powerful you are at helping people deal with the right things. You can help them with absorption, you can help them with digestive issues, and you can help them systemically. So a little bit of iteration here. Enzymes make all things happen quickly. They're the building blocks of life. Nothing in life functions without them. But here's a fact. A lot of people don't know this. Vitamins don't work without minerals. Minerals don't work without vitamins but neither of them will work without enough enzymes. Interesting. I know lots of people take a multivitamin uh, every day. They may not take a multimineral. I know lots of people take multivitamins and multiminerals. But then I say, well, are you taking an enzyme? Well, no. Uh, well, this could help enhance what you're doing. So supplementing enzymes gives our overworked systems kind of a rest. We have less gas and bloating. We have better bowel movements. We're detoxifying faster. Our pH is becoming more balanced. And then the big thing that I'm trying to get to is your body needs help at times breaking down something called a biofilm. These come from a lot of gram-negative bacteria and viruses and funguses. They create a slimy environment that's hard to penetrate. And so sometimes if we can supplement with enzymes like in between meals, it helps to break down these biofilms. And we see this in science that some people get infections. And it's very difficult for antibiotics uh, to clear that infection because there's a biofilm in the way. Well, common sense. What if we supplement with enzymes to help break that up? So makes everything work faster and deeper. And we can break down uh, those detoxifications. We can get into better biofilm health. So yeah. Enzymes, I think, can improve our health in many ways. They help clear uh, the blood or purify the blood. They strengthen our immune system and deliver nutrients to our cells. They carry away toxins. They help deliver hormones, help balance cholesterol, triglyceride, and even assist in weight loss. So if you haven't used enzymes before or ever incorporated those into programs, I want you to think differently when we end. The big thing here is to help break down these biofilms, and we'll get into that in a little bit and get the right kind of environment going uh, for our bodies. Now, place a raw seed bean in boiling water, cooked, it will fail to sprout. So we know that we can take a raw live bean, and if we cook it, it will not sprout. Why? Because uh, cooking destroys enzymes. So science tells us only living organisms can make enzymes. Once they're dead, that stops. So in some circles, enzymes are considered a life force. Enzymes have been shown to produce a life force, which cannot be made synthetically. So this is why you're seeing a lot of research, and this is why you're listening to this webinar, not just with biofilms, but to increase energy and to increase uh, detoxification and keep that life force going in a positive way. We're just going to take a minute here to talk about digestive enzymes and I'm going to show you a little short video of how they work on your food. First, enzymes completely digest your food and allow for complete absorption, transportation of nutrients, eliminating waste. Now, do we have enough for a lifetime? I already talked about that. Medical science says yes, until you consider how much of our food is cooked and denatured and processed and boxed and refined. Those are devoid of enzymes. So that's no longer a true statement. The human body wasn't designed for shelf life and cooked. Fresh, raw, non-cooked foods contain enzymes from nature uh, to balance out the rest, but if we're not getting them, we're, we're having a problem. So we're going to load a little video here for you where I've taken some oatmeal. Two, one is a control and one is mixed with plant enzymes, which I'll talk about a little bit later. And you can see the difference as, as we show this here of what happens when we add plant enzymes to just regular oatmeal. Okay, so you can see 
And as quickly as a couple minutes to about 15 minutes, here's our oatmeal, our control, with no enzymes added. Very lumpy as oatmeal should look, and of course boiled water would make this very mashy. But very little moisture. Same amount of water was applied to both bowls. Here's our enzymes, and you can see this is very liquidy, very soupy. The longer we leave this sit, the more runny it will become. Why is that important? Because it's always important in our digestive tracts that we can take a solid and turn it into a liquid. This is how the body absorbs nutrients. So if we go back to this bowl here, imagine this kind of more of a roughage, not that that's a bad thing, but it's going to take a lot longer for the body to break down into nutrients, whereas the enzymes have speed up all kinds of chemical reactions, breaking down all of the little proteins and the fibers, making this extremely easy for the body to absorb, and that's the power of enzymes. So that video there just kind of gives you a little bit of a visual of what happens with digestive enzymes and how they work, right? You can see that uh, the enzymes break that oatmeal down into a soupy, liquidy base, much easier to digest, where the other one just kind of turns to rock after a while. So that's just an example, and that's something you can do at home. Just take two little bowls of oatmeal, right? Add enzymes to one and not the other, and within 10 minutes you can show that to anyone how fast it breaks down our food and what and people are very visual when they see something like that they start to understand why you want to uh, up the ante right supplying enzymes all right the big thing that we run into quite a bit in this digestive discussion before we get more systemic is the heartburn right and, and a lot of people are concerned about that you know should we stop this hydrochloric acid production and that's what some over-the-counter medications do and, and people have heartburn and they want to stop it uh, that's great to get you out of trouble, but it's not something we should be looking at long term because you need this hydrochloric acid. And um, especially after age 40, we start making a lot less of it. So poor diets, overeating, gulping the food way too fast, right? Just not taking the time to enjoy our meal uh, is, is, is part of the reason. And heartburn is actually a lack of hydrochloric acid, not an excess. And that's kind of how we think of it. You know, we give you these... Uh, calcium carbonates and we give you different things to try to soak that up and stop that production and H2 antagonists and all these different things that are used. Um, but lack of hydrochloric acid can be a problem because long term hydrochloric acid, as I mentioned before, its main job is to break protein down. So if we don't have enough, you know, we could actually get in a little bit of malnourishment and actually help people with digestive enzymes get out of this situation. So they come in uh, pretty handy there. We'll talk about that a little bit, about individual enzymes. Now, systemic enzymes, we talked about that. Um, they help concentrate on many of the metabolic problems and even fibrins and many different things, but they're required for detoxification. So if you're doing a lot of cleansing out there, always add in an enzyme. It just makes everything happen faster and easier for the client. So it's kind of required. Also, these enzymes are necessary uh, through different types of detoxification pathways. One example is turning fat-soluble toxins into a water-soluble toxin. It cannot happen unless there's enough enzymes. So again, if our enzymes are overworked and underpaid and we're bringing in too much cooked and denatured food and chemicals and additives and preservatives, they're tying up all our enzymes. So there, all the enzymes are just trying to break down food. They don't have time to clean house, right? So less enzymes is more toxicity. It creates a more toxic environment. So if you're a person who believes strongly in detoxification and cleansing and, and all these different applications, which you should be as a natural health consultant, you got to understand, well, uh, you know, if I was probably supplementing with daily enzymes in everything I was doing, it's kind of like helping the body detox every single day. And doesn't that make more sense to stay clean? Enzymes help balance our pH in our system so we don't become more acidic. If we're becoming acidic, uh, most of you should know that that's going to probably lead to a lot of inflammation and a lot of problems for the human body. If we talk about this detoxification, uh, purging the bowels, it goes way back. And the Greeks kind of favored uh, something called saline enemas. But the Native American Indians, you know, they pioneered herbs. They liked herbs because they have naturally occurring enzymes, right? If we're eating herbs, 
that are wild crafted, harvested, even propagated, and they're live, and we swallow them as a powder, as a capsule, a tea, a tincture. Uh, it has enzymes to it, right? And so they liked going to the herbs because they act quickly and safely. And it's more important today, I think, than ever to be using something more from a natural perspective. Chemicals, heavy metals, pesticides, herbicides, all these things did not exist prior to the Industrial Revolution. And our digestive systems just weren't designed for these things uh, that were man-made. So toxins are coming into us on a daily basis, the air, the water, the food, right? And they kind of tie up our enzymes. So it makes sense to help clean house with enzymes, kind of like a chimney, right? You got to clean it from time to time. You want to avoid the fire. It's kind of estimated that the average American has about almost up to 25 pounds of undigested fecal matter in them at all times. Well, sometimes you need enzymes to break that down, break it up, and get it out. Makes sense? Does not include chemical mixtures of our fecal matter. So, you know, how toxic are we? So you can see there's room here for improvement. The system's overworked. We get lack of fiber. Uh, we're not getting good foods that are fresh and raw and natural. Therefore, we're missing more enzymes. Uh, we may not uh, be supplementing with probiotics. Uh, we're running into a mess. Hydrochloric acid's decreasing. We get uh, this hiatus or hiatal hernias, and you know we need help. And and the poor bacteria, the microbiome is trying to survive this too by making their own environment. So when things get bad, because the person has uh, not understood what you're listening to today, right? They kind of make something called a biofilm. It's a secretion. And this biofilm is necessary for their survival. They want to survive too. So let's talk about this biofilm. Did you know microbes develop their own environment in and around the body? Yeah. So uh, it isn't just they're surviving in water or extracellular fluids. Um, but they create um, this type of environment, a slimy, sometimes very difficult to penetrate environment to stay alive. It's called a biofilm. And we talked about it being on your teeth as one example that you're very familiar with. Um, but it can also be throughout the digestive tract. And this may make it difficult to clear out pathogenic organisms and certain yeasts, right, and even viruses. So this is where enzymes come into play systemically. They kind of modulate what's going on with that microbiome population and get it back to what it should be. You know, so how can an antibiotic be absorbed by a pathogen if it's protected by a casing, what we call a biofilm, it's very difficult. So medical doctors know this too, that sometimes uh, they have to give you antibiotics and they don't work because they're protected. They can't get at it. And biofilms lead to infections, especially um, the biggest one is implanted medical or biomedical devices. There are 2 million cases per year in the U.S. Um, so that's a lot. And that's just biomedical devices. That's not talking about systemic infections. And enzymes are now being studied uh, very intensely about how do you break down these barriers so the body can self-regulate. So a little more information, you know, what is biofilm? Any group of microbes in which cells stick together and adhere to a surface in a matrix, and it's extracellular polymeric substance, kind of uh, thick, slimy, snotty, right? Fungus, parasites, bacteria, viruses. They're made up of proteins, and many have a shell or a protein coating that protects them. That's a self-biofilm. So they have this coating around themselves, and they're also swimming in a coating. And you can see sometimes if you're taking herbs, like a golden seal, or uh, sometimes it's even a, uh, a nano silver or silver solution, uh, sometimes it's tough for it to come in contact with the pathogen you're trying to get rid of because of the biofilm. Theory suggests that protease, if, remember, ASE means enzyme, protein is protein. So this is an enzyme that breaks up protein, protease. And it also kind of gets at this matrix, of this polymeric substance, which is comprised of proteins. So think about the logic. The more protein enzymes you're taking, well, the easier to break up this protein biofilm. And that's where we're turning for our understanding of denaturing these biofilms to get at these pathogens. And sometimes we even have them floating around in our bloodstream. These are abnormal proteins that float around in the bloodstream, and they're not supposed to be there, right? They contribute to allergens of a lot of different natures. And so we see a lot of food allergies because of biofilms. So biofilms are also known as the cities of microbes. 
formed for many reasons by microbes. They can float, swim, organized, coordinated community like a nursery. They can attach to your teeth, the intestines, uh, even on liquids. It's pretty amazing that they can create this community, this city, this environment all on their own. And there are some positives to that because the good bacteria, this helps them share nutrients. As I mentioned, it's a nursery, shelters them from toxins, but it also shelters them from antibiotics and even your own immune system. So, <coughs> excuse me. So there you can see the very uh, <coughs> apropos power of why systemic enzymes can be an important part of any type of program. So it all starts with one in the case where these microbes are pathogenic then the infection becomes chronic. Even though we may be taking medicines, we may be trying over-the-counter natural remedies, and we don't seem to get a, a foothold on it. An example of that would be candida albicans or candidiasis, right? It makes the yeast more resistant to antifungals. So it's important that we have a protease type of enzyme involved in what we're doing. Biofilm, we're only concerned with infectious. We're not concerned with the good part of it. So this is, you know, where we have to think about when we're toxic, when we're fighting infection, when we know we have candida issues. This is when you should be thinking about uh, more of an aggressive type of enzyme therapy. Some biofilms contain not only proteins in the matrix, but something called cellulose, sometimes strong enough that it can even become fossilized. Imagine that. And I've seen that. I worked in surgery. I saw uh, things come out of people's digestive systems that basically were not identifiable. <clears throat> and many times we would try to understand what these things are. We label those catarrh or toxins or sludge. And, and many times when they were looked at uh, and broken down, we would say, well, it's comprised of proteins and cellulose. Well, what was that? It was a biofilm. So uh, it's very real. Now, not all biofilms are bad. It's all, not all doom and gloom. Uh, let's talk about a little um, part of us called the appendix. It's now thought to help produce biofilms for the large intestine to help re-inoculate the gut with good gut flora. So it's always about balance, right? It's always about balance, keeping the teeter-totter in the middle of what happens with us. Too much, not good, not enough, bad, you get the idea. So anytime we can help the body deal with those types of things, the better. This is an example of a recent enzyme study uh, to address Alzheimer's. The researchers found an enzyme that clears away something called misfolded proteins in nerves, which is a hallmark, uh, these types of uh, matter. And the key here that basically is to help stop that protein buildup in the brain. Well, you got to have enzymes to do that. And enzymes may help stop this buildup by breaking apart these misfolded proteins. So this gives you an example of what I meant by the research, the studies, everybody's looking at this, trying to figure out, uh, you know, how we can help the body help itself. So it makes sense to me. It doesn't say that taking enzymes will stop this problem. But if you think about what causes the problem and how things are denatured, anything we're adding to help overcome that and assist the body makes sense especially when you consider most of our foods are void of enzymes, okay? Enzymatic relief in general, digestion. So I just wanted to give you some of the top enzymes, and this is what you should look for in what I, I call a multi-full spectrum enzymatic formula. I like the plant-based. Uh, that's nature, easy to work with. It's a life force. But I, I look for that that it should either contain something like a pepsin, hydrochloric acid. I think that's really important for people over the age of 40. It's not uh, written in stone. But what happens is when we get to about the age of 40 is our hydrochloric levels start to really take a dive. And that's because nature says as you get older, you don't need as much food. Yet it always makes me laugh when I see some of the uh, older populations going to the uh, smorgasbords or the all-you-can-eat buffets, right, in their 80s, uh, trying to get uh, $595 out of a 595 meal, right? Uh, it's ridiculous. You don't need to eat that much food when you're older. Uh, but we do that as a society. We tend to overeat, and, and there's the holidays. And, and so older people have a lot of digestive problems because uh, they're taking in more than they should. So by adding a pepsin, you really help their digestive situation. Pancreatin, uh, microzymes, which is a protease uh, enzyme system. 
I'll talk about that in a minute. Papain, bromelain, bile salts, lipase. These are all uh, kind of a, a multi-spectrum shotgun approach that pretty much is available there should you need it. And I'll have some questions and answers at the end because uh, I'm sure some of you are already coming up with questions uh, which will answer some of those. Targeted choice, right? You got to think, do I want to assist the digestion? Do I want to maximize my nutrient absorption? Do I want to help with detoxification? Do I want to get to the whole system? We can do all of those. And the good news is all these enzymes are very powerful and very gentle and very safe. So we don't have to worry about we overdid it. I cannot find one study that's ever shown that. Now, for example, these are important to help you understand what these ACEs do, like lipase. L-I-P means fat. ACE means enzyme. So for a complete breakdown of fat, you might want to supplement with a lipase, especially for those that have had a cholecystectomy or they're missing uh, a gallbladder. I always tell them, you know, you should probably be on a, a lipase supplement for life because your gallbladder is no longer storing all that bile and you're making the liver work harder. And you can't uh, not eat fats. You need good fats too, right? So I want to make sure that they break those down appropriately and not in a bad way. Lactase. Lact means milk or dairy. People that are lactose intolerant, you know, sometimes that's hidden in foods and they have digestive upset. Uh, you may want to add in a, a lactase type of enzyme. Also helps with dairy allergies. Natokinase, um, that's a type of what we call a protease enzyme complex. Helps with the blood quality. Natokinase has a lot of scientific studies, especially from Japan, where people eat something called natto on a daily basis, and their cardiovascular uh, death rates are way below the U.S. It's very interesting. Uh, so I, I implore you to read about natto kinase and its power. Um, so I use that one quite a bit uh, to clear the blood and help with the blood quality. Protein digestive aid. This is for additional protein absorption. That might be a good one for your athletes. That might be a good one for people that are over the age of 40. Uh, I actually had a customer once that came to me uh, who was taking supplements for a long time, uh, even prior to coming to me. And he said, you know, I've got a really interesting question, Dr. J. Uh, every time I go to the bathroom, what comes out are whole capsules. So what I actually said, I got to see this, right? <laughs> so he actually gathered some up and brought them in. And, of course, they were kind of uh, degrading. But you could see there were capsules that were semi-broke open, and there was nothing inside them anymore. So whatever supplement he was swallowing, an herb, a plant, whatever, a vitamin, <laughs> it wasn't breaking down the gelatin capsule. Well, what is that? Uh, it's basically a protein. So I'm like, Okay, and your age, you know, I'm 62, whatever, you know, what's going on here? I'm like, well, you're not breaking down protein. So all we did was add, uh, you know, enzymes, a multi-systemic enzyme with some uh, pepsin, and hydrochloric acid, and bromelain, and problem solved. Uh, but it changed a lot of other things about his health as well. So it told us that you weren't breaking down protein. There's another one called Advanced Full Spectrum Enzyme Formula. This one um, doesn't have any hydrochloric acid, so maybe if you're under the age of 40, this is where I start. Or if people have a lot of severe heartburn, I'll start with this one because it's plant-based, it's vegetarian formula, it helps change the pH very rapidly, and then as they get less symptoms, then I'll graduate them to one with hydrochloric acid. Um, so hopefully that helps you in how you're trying to help other people. Protease itself, as we talked about before, the ACE enzyme, prote means protein. I, I refer to it as a garbage collector. Protease can be used with food, and if it is, it's going to act mostly upon the protein that you ate with that bolus or that meal. However, you can take those in between meals, and when your body has extra protease, it sends it to the bloodstream, and there it can start working on what I call these biofilms, right? It's a garbage collector. So it's great if taken in between meals, provides support of breaking down stubborn biofilms. A lot of those can be composed of yeast and gram-negative bacteria, and even viruses make something called a virome. So you can see it has huge benefits and applications uh, when we're trying to help people with herbal programs. So I want to make a case for that protease. Protease digests protein at a rate of about 300 grams per hour. So that, you know, your typical protease enzyme supplements, uh, that's kind of what you're looking at. 
largely responsible for keeping the intestines free from parasites, bad bacteria, protozoa, and yeast overgrowth. So if, if you're clearing out all those proteins in that matrix, it's very hard for these critters to call your insides home. And there are constant demands to manufacture protein enzymes, which can cause an enzymatic deficiency. Well, if that happens, like the gentleman that I just talked about, who's eliminating empty gelatin capsules, what's happening here is his enzymes are all tied up. Well, then the pathogens get a leg up because they can start creating biofilms and you don't have enough protein enzymes to tear them down. So that should be an aha moment for you or a light bulb moment uh, for those of you that have tried many things and didn't get to where you wanted to go. Enzyme supplementation used for overeating. If you're eating too much, you need additional enzymes. Poor digestion, think enzymes. Too much cooked food, think enzymes. Toxic, think enzymes. Trying to fight off a problem, a systemic infection, a chronic problem, think biofilms, enzymes. Also accelerates our detoxification, positive modulation of the microbiome. So studies have shown us that by doing enzyme supplementation on a daily basis, the biome gets better. Uh, there's more good guys, less bad guys. Protease in between meals is effective for things like that fungal problem, candida we talked about because they create a very difficult biome um, with a biofilm that we've got to tackle with an enzyme. And mucus, right? Thick stuff that gets in our nose and our ears and in our respiratory tract, right? It could be a friend or an enemy. You need some, but you don't need a lot. So even stubborn sinus problems, and believe me, you, a lot of you are perking up now. Mucus acts like a biofilm. So if you've got too much of this, yeah, we've got to correct the diet. They may be getting too much gluten, too much dairy, whatever, too much sugar. But 80% of chronic sinusitis sufferers show biofilm present when removed. So a lot of times when we take these out in pathology and then we take a look at them, it's made of this uh, polymer matrix I talked about, this biofilm. And this is where I think uh, using full-spectrum enzymes in between meals makes a lot of sense, uh, which can help break that down quicker and faster and help the body eliminate those thick mucousy things. So hopefully that's got your attention. Natokinase I talked about is a protease enzyme system. That's what we call it. Uh, many enzymes in the protease category can be produced from something called Aspergillus species, uh, Niger, Aroise, Melius. Although that's a fungus species, it is only the enzyme end product that we want. So I, I do want people to know this because I get this question a lot. Hey, I noticed this natokinase that I'm using is made from aspergillus. Isn't that a fungus? And, uh, you know, I have problems with funguses. No, it's the enzyme that's made from a fungus. It's kind of like fermentation when you're making uh, beer or yogurt, right? It's the same kind of thing. That has actually been shown to be free of mycotoxins, which is what we're allergic to, not the fungus. However, if someone is allergic, uh, to aspergillus or type of funguses, I would avoid that enzyme just to be safe, but yet I really can't find any evidence to that fact. Some natokinases are produced from soy, which contain vitamin K, and that can be contraindicated in blood thinner therapies, although that's a whole nother webinar, right? There's vitamin K1, 2, and 3. Uh, using aspergillus, this is less of a concern, but still may be contraindicated. So what we're saying here is, Maybe this type of enzyme, anatokinase, uh, we would defer if people are on blood thinners. For example, uh, there's an enzyme called catalase. That gets a lot of scientific uh, uh, look and research. From the aspergillus is produced here is an antioxidant enzyme breaking bonds of hydrogen peroxide to water. It happens as fast as 40 million bonds are broke per second. So enzymes, again, remember, they make things happen really fast but we found it's a free radical fighter. And you find that in most enzyme blends. So that's why people are saying now, well, this is also anti-aging, right? Anytime you speed up the metabolism uh, and help the body detoxify, it's, it's always a good thing. So again, there's a lot here. So we can classify enzymes as also antioxidant. Catalase, as I just mentioned, a free radical fighter. Uh, a lot of people don't know that or talk like that. And it has no uh, counterindications or downside. But the health benefits are pretty astounding if used correctly. So um, don't be afraid of these things. 
this article, the Scientist, uh, Scientist Magazine at Harvard Medical School, there's proof the catalase enzyme prevents free radical damage and can extend our lifespan because of its free radical fighting ability. It may also help in the war against other degenerative diseases. So I wanted to show you that the science that's coming out on this, and if you look at University of Washington, Seattle, uh, this was done on rats, but it showed that by supplementing enzymes to rats, that the lifespan increased 20%. That would equate to about 25 human years. So here's anti-aging just from enzyme therapy. Essential oils can be helpful too, right? I like a blend of ginger, anise, peppermint, lemongrass. It provides a lot of relief and stomach digestive upset. It can be applied topically to the tummy, usually with a carrier. Uh, it's worked for me many times uh, when my tummy doesn't quite feel right, or even nausea, car trips, plane, boat. Uh, it has uh, a type of action in modulating the microbiome in a positive way and getting the pH balanced. So lots of stuff that we talked about here. The biggest emphasis was, you know, trying to understand these biofilms and that we do have ways to tackle that. Keep in mind that your digestive system, two-thirds of all your organs, maintaining energy, cells, tissue, keeps you functioning, right? That's a lot. So anytime we're helping the digestive system with enzymes, you're helping two-thirds of every problem you can think of, no matter what it is. Each day we process two and a half gallons of food, liquid, bodily secretions into 12 ounces of waste. Think about that. Two and a half gallons of food, liquid, and secretion gets broken down into just 12 ounces of waste. That's what enzymes do. Very efficient. But if we're overloading the body with dead food, cooked food, it's slowly killing us because it's slowing us way down and, and taking away our years. Systemically, which we talked about a lot here, concentrating on, on the metabolic and the biofilms is also affected by enzyme. Supplementing with enzymes, in my opinion, very cheap health insurance because it's safe. There's no downside. It improves programs. It helps clear stubborn health issues. So hopefully um, you start thinking a little bit differently you know, going forward today. How can you accelerate the program you're offering to someone? How can you help them when they come in and, and talk to you about issues that have been discussed in this webinar? I hope you will add uh, in enzymes in the future. And remember, the road to good health is paved with good intestines, and there's no better advice than that. So I appreciate all you guys listening. Thank you very much. All right, we'll take a little bit of time to go into some questions and answers. These are common uh, questions that I get quite a bit, and some of you are typing in as I speak. You know, can you overdo enzymes? No. Research from over 100 years shows not one report of a side effect. Plant enzymes are food. They're a life force. So your body will use what you give it, and the rest of it, it's not going to hurt anything, right? <laughs> so why wouldn't you consider doing enzymes? What will I feel from supplementing enzymes? Question I get asked a lot. Um, I already mentioned way before that most people find results right away. It's very quick. It's not magic, but some find that result you know, uh, very quickly. Sometimes it's more subtle or gradual. Good news? Again, we can't overdo it. I kind of talked about this question before. I thought that I produce all the enzymes I need because our, our medical system tells us that. No, not if you consider everything's cooked, processed, refined, preservative, added, toxins all contribute to the fact that our modern living has stressed our natural supplies. Right? That's what makes fruit rot. The reason your fruit rots on the counter is because it's loaded with enzymes and it's breaking down every second of the day. So fruits are already pre-digested because of the enzymes they contain, which is why a lot of times you eat fruit and 20 minutes later you're hungry. As long as we live in this toxic and enzyme deficient world, logic dictates some form of enzymatic therapy. Another question I get, can I just raw juice my way out of this? No. Raw food only provides enough enzymes to digest that particular food at the time. That's the way nature designed it. Nature, a thousand years ago, a hundred years ago said, hey, there are enzymes in your food and your juices and your fruits, but they're to help with that food you're consuming. And the ones you were born with, I already talked about, are, are helping with additional food and, and detoxification. But when you overstrap the body, it doesn't have enough. Bacterial contamination. 
bacterial contamination also stops us from eating more raw foods in general. Also, fiber is digested by probiotics and an enzyme called cellulase. So we have those microbes eat better and have a better microbiome. Uh, well, as Jay was saying, uh, uh, he answered many of the, the most common questions he's asked about uh, enzyme therapy and, and adding enzymes to a product program. So we are going to, uh, that was Jay's last uh, uh, parting thought there. He gave a fantastic presentation. So thank you, Jay, for sharing information about enzymes and how they help us. Again, Nature Sunshine has come through with Education Week 2018, knowledge at your fingertips. What a wonderful opportunity we've had to hear from Jay about enzymes and how they fit within our uh, daily lives or how they are not in our daily lives and how we need to incorporate them. Some things that I just want to share with you as we kind of wrap things up with our webinar today, just some parting thoughts uh, regarding enzymes and your Nature Sunshine business. Uh, Keep in mind that enzymes are catalysts to thousands of chemical processes that take place in the body. I liked how Jay mentioned that. They're catalysts. Well, I'm going to encourage you to let them be a catalyst in your business. If you are having uh, challenges with accelerating program compliances or, or program results, think of enzymes. Look for, look for those opportunities to add enzymes to product programs within uh, your Nature Sunshine um, product programs that you're putting together and, and using. Think of enzymes. Remember the enzymes are antioxidants. You know, when you're having conversations with your friends or when you're talking about anti-aging, Jay, Dr. Jay said there, um, hey. the, the enzymes can help us with that. So um, very good um, opportunities there, of course, to incorporate enzymes into our product programs. And enzymes are critical to our overall health. And as Jay mentioned, they decrease as we age, so we need to add them to our daily product programs. As we, and, of course, um, the all-important message of today's presentation is those enzymes will help break down the microbiofilm that uh, may be causing uh, many problems and reasons why we can't uh, feel our healthiest in our life. I uh, remind you that one key word that came out to me in this presentation is life force life force folks if you want to add life force to your nature sunshine business think about the nature sunshine enzymes that are available to you um i always uh, one thing that jay brought out in his presentation was that as we get older maybe the, as soon as the age of 40 we start losing that hydrochloric acid um in our bodies and so we have a harder time breaking down those proteins right and uh, uh one of my favorite uh, Ways to remember a product that Nature Sunshine has is PDA, you know, uh, public display of affection. Give your body a public display of affection there and uh, give it some nice enzyme support. So, any rate, uh, Jay, are you back on there with us? Yes, Brian. I, I, I kind of got zapped here. <laughs> I apologize. Sorry about that. My Looks internet. like you were wrapping things up with the slides, so I'll just give yeah. you a moment to give a parting thought, and then I'll review some product promotions. Uh, remind everybody of some, some things that we have going on, and then we'll wrap things up. So give you a moment for a parting thought there, Jay. Thank you, Brian. Sorry I got zapped. Technology is great until you get uh, a poor Internet connection. But thank you so much, everyone, for listening to, I feel, a very powerful webinar in connection with many of the products we use at this company and for many different things. Enzymes work. They're fast. They make things happen quicker. They're safe. Uh, there's no contraindications, so you can advise anyone to use those uh, on a daily basis. And in my practice, uh, it's very rare that people walk out unless I have some kind of enzyme either um, connected to the program or a part of their protein shakes. Uh, I always want to make sure there's some form of enzyme uh, combination that's being sent with them to improve so many wonderful different things. But hopefully what you learned today is you can use them even uh, for uh, outside the digestive system, such as systemic. So thanks for listening, everybody. And please feel free to go back and listen to this again and again and share it with other people. God bless you. Thank you, Jay. Appreciate that. Yes, technology is wonderful. Sometimes it can nip us. But uh, wonderful presentation again. Thank you, Jay, for putting the time and effort into putting this together and uh, presenting this information. So many, so many valuable points that we've learned today about enzymes and how they really are a life force. And with that, I will 
bid you farewell. Thank you for joining us on, on today's Education Week webinar. What a great experience we've had. Thank you, Jay, Dr. Jay, for presenting the information. Everybody have a great day, and thank you. Join us again on our next Education Week webinar. And with that, I'll bid you farewell. Have a good night.